In this video, let's look at how to use the TK9 plugin to do something cool called color grade sampling, which makes it possible to apply the color theme of one image to another one. And if you already have my complete TK9 button by button course, and you'd like to add this video to your collection, I've placed a download link in the description so you can download this. The term color grading originally comes from film and then video. In still photography, it generally involves shifting the original colors in an image to create a new color palette or color theme, which changes the mood or color harmony. Note that this is color grading, not color replacing. So the colors that are already in the image are shifted, but they're not entirely replaced. Some of my favorite photographers masterfully use color themes in their images. People like Aaron Bobnick, Albert Dross, Ryan Dyer, and Eric Bennett. Lightroom and Camera Raw have user-friendly color grading tools, but they're limited and I have trouble getting the results that I want. The color grading tool in the TK plugin provides us with a user-friendly interface for color grading in Photoshop. And because it is Photoshop, TK color grading can do many things that you can't do with Lightroom or Camera Raw color grading. One of these things is color grade sampling, which is done with this button, and it allows us to sample colors from the same image or even from a different image. One way I love to use the TK9 color grading tool is to do color grade sampling right from the image itself. And that way, you know at least that the colors that you're sampling, that you're color grading with, go with the image because they're already in the image. Depending on which colors you sample, this may not produce a very dramatic color grade shift, but it can really enhance the colors and push them subtly in the directions you want them to go. And you can also work with contrast. So to do color grade sampling right from the same image, I usually start with the highlights marker and choose the sampling dropper. And for this, I'm gonna sample one of these bright yellow colors in the trees here. And so now I can just add more of that yellow color into the highlights and I can pull over the highlight brightness and kind of create a little more highlight contrast. Now I'm gonna move on to the midtone marker, get the sampling tool. And for this, let's see, maybe I'll try sampling one of these kind of um, gray tones or actually maybe kind of one of these off yellow or orange tones and let's try that now of course that's very strong i chose a pretty saturated color but i think i want to use a color along that color line between no saturation and complete saturation so i can kind of just draw a line back to maybe down here somewhere and click and now i'm applying that color but just more subtly and now i can decide what I want to do with those midtones, and I think darkening the midtones down a little bit. I like that. And now I'll move on to the shadows, grab the sampling tool, and let's see, maybe I'll sample the shadows from over here in this dark tree somewhere. Um, yeah, I don't know, maybe something like that. It's almost black, no matter what I do. And let's darken that down a little bit. And I might bring it just slightly more towards the blues here, just barely, somewhere in there. All right, let's see how that color grade is working with that image. And sampling from the image itself enabled me to subtly shift those colors and adjust the color contrast in a way that's very pleasing that works with the colors that are already in the image. Okay, now let's work with sampling colors from a different image. In this case, I love the colors that the light was giving me in this image. And this is taken very close by, but at a different time of day slightly, a little earlier in the morning, a little bluer light. And also the way I developed this image, it, I just don't like the colors as well. So I'm wondering if I can bring some of these colors over into this image. So with both of these images open on the screen and with the image I want to color grade selected, I'll go into the color grading tool and that'll add a color grading layer. And it's the same process as I just did. I'm gonna start with the highlights and grab the sampling tool. But instead of sampling from the image itself, I'm gonna sample from this image. So I think maybe kind of these warm highlights in the clouds. 
uh, or maybe the warm highlights on the mountain right up here. Let's try that. And I can adjust the brightness, maybe bring a little more contrast into the brights there. And I might wanna even go more yellow. So along this line, click out here to add a little more color into those highlights. Now I'll come over to the midtones, grab the sampling tool, and I'm gonna sample my midtones maybe from in this area and say okay and darken those and now go to the shadows and sample my shadows from down in here and click okay and maybe darken those a bit as well and maybe bring that back in towards the middle slightly don't want to go quite that blue just a little bit blue and in doing that i have now you know, it's not a perfect match because these are two different images. The original colors are different. The lighting source is different and how I develop them is different, but I definitely brought over, I think the general theme of the colors from the other image. Now I may want to do more work with this. Um, you know, some of these colors are becoming a little oversaturated, but I really love how that worked with the foreground. And now in this image, I want to try to shift the colors or color grade based on the color palette or the color theme that's in this painting by Albert Bierstadt. So I'm going to start off doing it the same way we've been doing it. And then I'm going to show you a second way that might be helpful in some situations. So first with my image here in the Faroe Islands selected, make sure that's the selected one. I'll go into the color grading tool to create that color grading layer. And starting with my highlights, grab the sampling tool and sample some of these highlights right here in the painting or maybe in some of these uh, redder highlights down there. I don't know, let's try that and see. And not a ton of bright highlights in this image, so it's not doing a lot yet. Now let's go over to the midtones, sampling tool, uh, maybe some of these kind of bluer midtones in here. We'll try that and bring it down a little bit, the brightness. Now over to the shadows. And for the shadows, maybe I'll sample them out of this tree here, uh, somewhere in there. Let's try that. The very blue might be a little bluer than I want to go. Um, yeah, and I may lighten that up slightly, but there we go. Now I've applied kind of the general color themes from that beer stat painting into my image and I could continue working with fine tuning those colors a little bit but you get the idea that's what we've already done now let's look at a different way of doing this so I'm going to go ahead and turn off this color grading layer and I want to simplify the highlights midtones and shadow colors out of this image because really there's a lot of different highlight colors I could choose from anywhere from kind of yellows to blues to greens to oranges, um, you know, to some of these colored flowers down here. What bright color am I selecting from? Well, what is the average highlight color in this image? And same with the midtones and the shadows. And to figure that out, what we would do is we would select this image and then you can go to the export save for web legacy, get there that way. Or in the panel, you just click this save button right here. And that opens up for us the legacy save for web window. And here we're gonna switch from JPEG over to GIF. And then for the number of colors on this side, oh, sorry, we're gonna go to perceptual here. And then we wanna select the number of colors and we want three, but that's not an option. So we can just come out here and manually enter three. So now with three colors, Next, we'll come down here to this menu. You want to arrange those colors by luminance so that they will organize shadows, midtones, highlights. And so now here we can see these are the average shadow colors, these are the average midtones, and this is the average highlights. And now we would save this. We need to save this. We can't sample from this window. So we need to save this out. And I'm just gonna save it out here to my desktop. Save it as a GIF file. And now I've opened that saved GIF here in Photoshop. And that's what I'll be doing my sampling from. So go back to the image and in the color grading interface, 
click plus to create a new color grading layer. That's the one we did from the painting itself. And now this time we're going to sample directly from these average colors. So here's my highlight color right there. Click OK. Work with the brightness and contrast. Go to midtones. Click the eyedropper sample tool. Sample the midtone average color. Work with that a little bit. And now over to the shadows and sample the shadow average color, which is a very different shadow color than I selected from the image previously. So that's going to give us a somewhat different color grade than we had on the last one. And I don't know where the perfect spot for that is, but so here's the color grade sampling from the average highlight midtones and shadows. And here's the color grade where I was just manually sampling from the colors in the image myself. So that is another way that you can do color grade sampling from another image using the average highlight, midtone, and shadow values. And with TK9 color grading, if you ever get to a color grade that you think is really something useful and you might want to use it on other images as well, you can come up to here and save that color grade as a preset, which is pretty easy to do. I'm going to call this one California Spring, because that's the name of the Bierstadt painting I took the colors from. And there it is. And now I can quickly try out these different color grades that I've saved, compare between them, and see how they look on that particular image. And then when I've got the one I want, I'm going to stick with my California Spring. We'll just go back to the color grade window. And that color grade is now saved for future use. So as you can see, these methods of color grade sampling with TK9 are very useful and have given me much more control and success when working with the color relationships in my images. So I hope you found this TK9 tip useful. Make sure to download a copy of this tutorial if you'd like to add it to your collection. And thanks always for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you again soon.